Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Tuesday the 16th of November. I do hope this finds you well. Do comment, let me know you're here. It's always great to know that you're with me. As always, we use the form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use one of today's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. On a Tuesday, the overarching theme of prayer is incarnation. And so as we've set aside these few minutes together, we just pause to remember that we are in the presence of God and we pray. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, yet born of the Virgin Mary. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Holy God, holy and mighty one, holy and strong one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and incarnate one, holy and indwelling one, abide in us. Holy God, holy and life-giving one, holy and guiding one, abide in us. And the psalm on a Tuesday is Psalm 121, my help comes from the Lord. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. From this time forth for evermore, my help comes from the Lord. And we continue reading from the prophet Isaiah, and we've reached chapter 10, verse 5. Woe to the Assyrian, the rod of my anger, in whose hand is the club of my wrath. I send him against a godless nation. I dispatch him against a people who anger me, to seize loot and snatch plunder, and to trample them down like mud in the streets. But this is not what he intends. This is not what he has in mind. His purpose is to destroy, to put an end to many nations. Are not my commanders all kings, he says? Has not Calno fared like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad and Samaria like Damascus? As my hand sees the kingdoms of the idols, kingdoms whose images excelled those of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not deal with Jerusalem and her images as I dealt with Samaria and her idols? When the Lord has finished all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the king of Assyria for the willful pride of his heart and the haughty look in his eyes. For he says, By the strength of my hand I have done this, and by my wisdom, because I have understanding. I removed the boundaries of nations, I plundered their treasures. Like a mighty one, I subdued their kings. As one reaches into a nest, so my hand reached for the wealth of the nations. As people gather abandoned eggs, so I gathered all the countries. Not one flapped a wing, or opened its mouth to chirp. Does the axe raise itself above the person who swings it, or the saw boast against the person who uses it? As if a rod were to wield the person who lifts it up, or a club brandish the one who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord Almighty, will send a wasting disease upon his sturdy warriors. Under his pomp a fire will be kindled like a blazing flame. The light of Israel will become a fire, their holy one a flame. In a single day it will burn and consume his thorns and his briars. The splendour of his forests and fertile fields it will completely destroy, as when one who is ill wastes away. And the remaining trees of his forests will be so few that a child could write them down. So another tough passage from Isaiah. Uh, So let me read a reflection on that passage in this week. The reflections are written by the Reverend Barbara Moss. She says, The tirade against Israel continues, and Assyria is to be the instrument of God's wrath, to take spoil and seize plunder and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. 
but Assyria has no reason to be complacent, as God will punish the arrogant boasting of the king of Assyria and his haughty pride. Reading these stern words, whether addressed to the Israelites or concerning the fate of the king of Assyria, we could be tempted to distance ourselves from the issues raised here. We might reflect on the tendency of all world powers in any age eventually to overreach themselves, calling to mind that well-known saying of historian Lord Acton, power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. But the reference to Jerusalem and her idols brings the matter much closer to home because the root of the problems of both nations lies in idolatry, the tendency to put other things before God. Our general human weakness in this respect is made clear right at the beginning with the stories of the Garden of Eden. Those things we idolise can be anything, possessions, talents, money, ideas, and may well be different for each person. I may not see myself as any kind of leader, but I must still fight daily with the temptation to present my own ideas and plans to God for God's approval, rather than seeking God's will in the first place. And that's helpful, isn't it, bringing it back to us and to the idols that we need to fight each day as we seek to put God first, not our own plans, our own ideas or anything else. And so we pray and we begin with the collect for this week. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we continue in prayer. That the coming of Christ may disperse all darkness. That the birth of Christ may hallow all life. That the love of Christ may be in every heart. Lord, have mercy. That the peace of Christ may fill the world. That the descent of Christ may uplift all peoples. That the humility of Christ may teach us gentleness. Christ, have mercy. That the presence of Christ may be within us, that the power of Christ may be upon us, that the Spirit of Christ may fill us, Lord, have mercy. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, born into a human family, may we know you in our homes. Bless our families and friends, our neighbours and all your people. Grant that we may rejoice that you are made flesh and dwell among us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father who has shown his love for us be with us. May the Son who's come to be among us be with us. May the Spirit who fills the whole world be with us. The Holy Three be within and without us now and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for prayer today and I do hope that you have a lovely Tuesday and if you're available, we are here for prayer again tomorrow at 9.45 and there's also a service in the church at 11am tomorrow on Wednesday. So hopefully we'll see you either online or in person or maybe both. Until then, take care. God bless. Bye for now.